Recently, I had a use case where I had to fetch the list of files in a given directory sorted by their last modification time. Now you know that File Explorer provides us this functionality. We can simply select the last modified sort order to get the files in an order sorted by their last modification time, right? But we need to do the same programmatically using Python. So in this video, we will learn how to fetch file timestamps using Python and use them in different ways. So without any delay, let's get started. Every operating system has a file system which is responsible for managing all your files and directories. Every file and directory has some properties which you can call metadata. For example, let's take a quick look at the file and directory metadata for any Linux file system. So there it consists of information such as inode number which is a unique identifier for that particular file or directory. Then you have access rights or you can call it permissions. Then you have size or numbers of blocks allocated. Then there is time of last access, last modification and last inode change. So these three refer to the file timestamps which are available to you. Then there is device number, ID of the file owner and group owner, time of birth and so on. So all this refers to any file or directory's metadata. And in any Unix or Unix-like system such as Linux or Mac, you can use a CLI command called stat which will give you all that information about any file or directory. So for example, on my desktop right now, I have a file called test.py. So what I can do is that I can simply do stat test.py and what I will get is the metadata about my file called test.py. I get the file name, the size of my file, the number of blocks allocated, the device, the access rights and these three timestamps access, modify and change. So the access timestamps refers to the last time this file was accessed. It can be terms of read or write. Then you have modify timestamp which refers to the last time the content of your file was modified and then the change timestamps uh, will be referring to the time when you changed the metadata of any of your files or directories. And one more thing that you can notice here is that the birth timestamp here is null and that is because many Linux operating systems do not support that. They will not store the information about when a file was last created. So you, you might not get the information but in Mac or in Windows, you can definitely get that information. Okay, so in Windows, how to get the metadata through command line, for that I have provided this link which you can refer. So there you can use something called WMIC feature in order to get that using command line. So I'll be providing this complete Jupyter notebook in the description of this video below so you can refer that. Now let us see how to fetch the file metadata using Python. And for that, I'll be using a fairly new module in Python called Pathlib. It's a very nice module in terms of the interface that it provides you for interacting with the file system paths. So let me start by doing from Pathlib import path. So path class will help me um, define various file system paths for any file or directory which I want to refer and then I can do various operations over it. So let me start with, um, so right now I have test.py available in my desktop. So I'm just going to create a path for it. p is equal to path test.py. So in this way I have got a path object and now what I need to do in order to fetch the metadata is use the stat function. So it is actually referring to the OS modules stat function and the result is a um, is an object of stat result defined in OS module only. So pathlib just refers to it but it's just that it's providing you a nice interface for dealing with all this that's why we are using the pathlib module. So I just created a path object for my file and then I used the p.stat function in order to get the metadata and now let us try to find what we actually need which is these three timestamps as we can see the a time m time and the c time so as we already discussed a time refers to the access time which is the time of most recent access then we have m time which refers to the modification time which refers to the time of most recent content modification and then the c time which refers to 
The most recent metadata change in case of Unix systems such as Linux or Mac, but in Windows it actually refers to the time of creation of a particular file or directory. So that you should keep in mind. So now um, let us go with the, la the latest modification time here. So p.stat.st underscore m time. So one thing that you can notice is that you also have another property called st underscore m time underscore ns which will provide you that same time in nanoseconds that is with more precision. But right now we are happy with this. So st underscore m time provides me this Unix timestamp. So this timestamp now can be converted to a daytime object if you want to make it more human readable. So let us just do that also. So from date time import date time and now all we need to do is date time dot from timestamp and that timestamp is this one. So let me just copy it for you and then we can just have a daytime object out of it. And to make it more easier to read, we can make it ISO format and you are done, right? So in this way, we can convert it to a daytime object so that we can read it in a much human readable manner. So that is one thing. And now coming to my original use case, which was to take a particular directory and read all files from it and fetch the list of those files in an order, which is sorted by the last modification time or let's say last access time of those files right so let's try to do that also so i have a directory called sample in my desktop so i'm just gonna create a path for that directory now so i will also like you to um, observe how simple the pathly module makes it for us to deal with any kind of file system paths files and directories so i create a path for the sample directory and now I can simply do p dot iter dir which will simply help me iterate over that directory and get all the file names. So p dot iter directory will give you a generator. So let me just convert it to a list so that we can see the result directly. So as you can see that it was now just giving me all the path objects for all the files which are present in my sample directory right. So Right now, we don't know what order it contains. If I just try to do sort it, I will get it by lexographical order, which is alphabetical order, as you can see, right? And now what I want to do is that I want to um, have it in an order, which is sorted by the last access time, let's say. So for the last access time, what I will do is that I will provide a sort key, which is a lambda function, which will simply do, it will take one element of this list at a time. So let it take, it has p and then what we do with that p is that we provide the key value which should be used for comparison so that will be p dot stat dot st underscore a time which is the last access type the latest access type so that's it and as you can see we are getting the new list and here the max value of st underscore a time is for foo dot py which means that this file was accessed most recently because it has the highest timestamp right and b.txt was accessed long ago in terms of um, access so yeah so now um, let us try to see an example let us try to access b.txt and let's see if it comes to the bottom or not so i will do cat sample slash b.txt so as I can see, I can see the content, which means that I have tried to access a file called b.txt in sample directory. So what will happen is that now its timestamp will be maximum and it will be shown in the as the last element of my list, right? So it means that this all is legit, it's working. So yeah, so this was how we can play around with the file timestamps of various files and we can fetch that value using Python. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this exploration and if you still have any doubts, you can put them in the comment section below. That's it from this video. Thanks for watching.